Hello and welcome back everyone to episode, I think, six. We've done six of these all on time except the last one, which I understand it wasn't on the Wednesday, it was on the Thursday. Well, let's just cut to the chase. I tried to upload it on the Tuesday and schedule it for the Wednesday. I uploaded it, I went to sleep, and then I was like, cool, it'll be there. Checked it Wednesday afternoon, I was at work, and I was like, oh no, <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> Shit, very annoyed. Was doing things on the evening of the Wednesday, so couldn't necessarily just run home to do the upload again. So then I went, I was like, do you know what? It's fine. I'm not doing things too late on the Wednesday. I will do them and I will, I just put it to upload straight away Wednesday evening. Get home Wednesday evening, check it, notice it had failed, redo it, go to sleep again, wake up, it's failed again. <laughs> But what it's doing is it's not failing, it's just getting halfway through the upload and then just my computer, I guess, is going to sleep because my downloads, my upload speed, sorry, has really slowed recently. But it's fine. It got uploaded in the end on the Thursday and all was well. Anyway, welcome back to episode six of the Lonely Man podcast with me, Ollie, your host, the only person here still. Today... We're going to start off with the beer once again, because I said I'd continue doing that. So, we've got Estrella with us today, which is a beer from Barcelona. Barcelona. It is a 4.6% uh, vol, uh, and that equates to 1.5 units. I think stronger than anything we had last time, but I can't remember. The drinking. Uh... Last time was a mess. Let's get a nice, nice bit of audio here. Beautiful. And then let's do the traditional. That's a very strong smell off the gate. I have had Estrella before, I'm pretty sure, but a long time ago. So let's give it a little pour. Get a good amount in there so we can, can have a whiff and stuff. So let's have a look. Okay, I mean it's it's fairly standard beer looking. I can't can't comment on the looks too much because what what am I gonna say? Again, a very strong smell, really rich smell though, deep, bitter. I want to do like wine tasting things. Oaky notes. I could I could smell it was in an oak barrel maybe. No, um, it's got a nice smell. It's definitely like a pub smell, like you'd walk into a pub and this is what you would smell. A uh, very strong just beer smell. So. Um, pretty muted. Kind of like the um, Asahi. Asahi? Is that what it's called? The Japanese one we had last time. Very muted. Very like, um, not really like a rich flavour there, just a very mute flavour. Let's see if the bottle says anything. Barley from local farmers, malted by dam with Mediterranean rice. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. Doesn't really say that much. I like it when a bottle says stuff on it. Um, it looks quite nice, obviously. It's from, again, Barcelona. Barcelona. Da -da 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 -da. Um, do we speed drink this? Because I've got a surprise. We're not just going to one country, we're going to two. So, we're going to speed drink this. Again, we'll speed up the clip. Let's go. Slow it down. That was thoroughly unpleasant. I didn't enjoy that. Um, not really a fan of the taste. I spilled a lot of it down me. I ate less this time though. I ate less before filming this and I'm gonna eat a lot after filming this to really consolidate what's about to be um, 
just a lot of beer inside of me. But I ate less. So, we're not going to chug the next one. Because I actually want to talk about things this episode. We are going to... Um, we're going to try it. We're going to do all of the... The, the 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 gif that we do the gif the the gaff oh lovely we're still going to do all of that um i just want to also sip on it basically so sorry next one desperados i like desperados it's a tequila flavored beer now i think it's brewed in the Netherlands. Um, it's distributed by Heineken. It doesn't say a huge amount. I think I think it says on the package. Um, is because I don't think you would expect it to be Mexican with all the look and the tequila, but I don't think it is. Where is Desperados from? The Netherlands. The Netherlands. Oh, by the way. Um, sorry. Estrella. Put in put in the Barcelona flag. Brazil. But Barca Barcelona is in Brazil. Don't listen to the typing. I'm not looking this up. I'm also not struggling to spell Barcelona. Is in which country? Spain. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I got an E in geography. Uh, that's another thing about me. I got an E in geography and GCSEs. Did very poorly. Um, so let's put up the, the Spanish flag for Barcelona. And now let's put a dunce cap on my head because I didn't know where Barcelona was. Let's, let's centre myself to make this easy. Yay! <laughs> Okay, anyway, so Desperados, made in the Netherlands, so let's put up the Dutch flag, because I know what, I know the Netherlands is the Dutch, I know that, so let's put up, the, I didn't actually look that up, I promise, I was just tabbing away from that, let's put up the, the Dutch flag right here, bam, Dutch flag, um, and let's do the old pori pour, you're supposed to have a bit of lime with this. If I'm honest, I couldn't be asked to get some lime. It's a lot darker coloured. Um, the the smell, in fact, is really fruity. It's kind of like the smell of if you got a Rattler, uh, which is just like a, more of a fruity beer, lower alcohol percentage. But you can really smell that it doesn't smell like beer. It's definitely not a smell like this one. This is not what you'd smell walking into a pub, necessarily. So, without further ado, I mean... I can't give you much flavour profile. It's sweet. Kind of limey. That's about it. Maybe we try tequila at some point. What I really want to do, if this channel pops off and makes a lot of money, I would like to try, insert image of this tequila here. I would like to try this. But it's like a hundred and something pounds. So let's make sh let's get us right up there in the YouTube rankings and then we'll grab that bottle of tequila. Or let's at least get us to some sort of good subscriber goal where a hundred something quid is worth spending because that's quite a lot. Um, Chris, how, how far are we in? 10 minutes. With the speed up, nothing. Yeah, so um, it's really nice. It doesn't taste that nice from the gas. Admittedly, it's mixed a little bit. But um, it's a very sweet flavor. Um, Fades quite quickly. There's not much to say about uh, Desperados, to be fair. It's um, it's rather unextraordinary, but it is nice tasting. So, mm. anyway, moving on to what the actual podcast is about, because it's not a beer podcast like last time. Today, we're going to talk about something that I realised today. It's kind of like an existential crisis. Yay! So I started a new job recently. Uh, I started as a sales colleague at a storage uh, place and I was wandering around today doing a bit of my job and my degree of course is in robotics engineering and I started to think how absolutely 
useless and redundant I was being there. So to explain a little bit about what I was doing, we have these things. I don't know if I can insert image here. It's like a little pusher and you push it and it's got two um, brushes that spin and it just collects dust in. And I was told to, I just had to go around the building basically and it's like three floors, include four including the ground floor and just push it round to pick up all the debris. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, and I was pathing it in my head. I was like, I'll go up here, down here, up here, cool. And then I was like, I am literally a bloody rumba. I am just, I'm just the motor for this hoover. And I was like, because it's not powered, it's just manual pushing. It's like a manual um, grass cutter. And I was just wandering around going like, why? <laughs> why am I doing this? I was like, surely this is not, this is something that could be automated because you have these rumbas now that have something called a lidar on it which is a uh, something someone in the comments will explain that or i'll explain it in the comments but i can't remember what like do you know what it, lidar meaning uh what does lidar stand for light detection and ranging there we go so basically what it does is a lidar works by uh, shining infrared light out and then it detects what bounced back and that's how it kind of measures how far things are. It's kind of like the above ground version of sonar where sonar basically projects a sound downwards and waits for its inevitable return up once it hits off of something. Uh, LiDAR is basically the same thing where it basically projects outwards and t collects that data in. So all of these rumbas now can basically map a room as they clean it and then you can actually look at um i'll see if i can insert image of what like a rumba sees on a house i don't know if i can get an image of that if not let's just put a question mark here um but yeah they basically collect this data and then they can build a, a map basically of your house to what to clean it's very cool i love it and i was thinking to myself i was like surely you could just you could save so much time and money if you got rid of the sales colleagues where I work, that's me included. I'm ousting myself from a job here. You got rid of us. You put one of these little uh, rumbas, but like a big industrial one on each floor to be able to like just go and just clean as and when. If you really wanted to get fancy, I guess you could try and get one to use an elevator, but it's a little bit too much, I would say. So you get them to clean. So they're all electric powered. You chuck some solar panels on the roof that means their cleaning is free. We sort of run through a little bit of a script anyway um, when it comes to sales calls. So I reckon we're not needed on site. I reckon you could have a load of people in an office, like a call center basically, and people could call in about inquiries and then they could be dealt with there. I reckon the main thing you need is just one person on site just to sort of deal with general inquiries and general issues and like maintenance of the bots. But I don't think, like, we use locks. We use, like, manual locks, right? Another thing that could then, because what we have to do at once a week sort of thing is do this thing called a lock check, where you walk around and you basically check all the locks are fine. If we just used keypads and magnetic, like, locks on the doors, well, we've got no issue now. We don't have to do the checks. If, for example, someone doesn't pay, we've got to put another lock on top of it, which means, like, that's another thing that a human has to do. If you just had it automatic... You'd just be like, okay, override their code. They can't get in anymore. There's so many things that I look at. I'm like, why don't I get it? It's money. It's money completely. But surely long run, paying my salary eventually, eventually is more expensive than just installing some solar panels. Because the solar panels would pay for the mag locks, the robots running, the general electricity of the building. Um... And they're huge buildings always. They're always huge buildings, these like storage buildings. So you just run them across the roof on both sides. Big, massive area for solar panels. You collect all that energy and you use it just for these operations. The robots don't even have to run daily. The robots could run at the end of every day because they could be programmed to say, okay, the building's closed at six, just in case. Turn on at eight and just clean the building. So they'll just come out of a little room because they've got plenty of it. They just come out of a room. They give a little whiz round on all the floors. They even, you can get ones that mop now. So like they could do one run of uh, sweeping, then they could do one run of mopping. And then in the morning, the person that comes in, they're just like caretaker in a sense. I would say it's a store manager at that point. They just have, 
I'm so sorry. They just have to empty the bins from the dust and they have to empty the water from the, the mopping and then that's it. And then the locks do it all themselves. So for example, when someone leaves the, the unit and it comes available again, we normally have to go up there. So they'll they'll leave. We'll be then be like, okay, cool. We'll take their lock off. We'll put our lock on. And then that's the process. But if it was just like, oh, I'm leaving, cool. It's like, cool, okay. Your code's now invalid. We have put like a store code on there. And then when someone else wants to come in, you're just done again. One person needs to be there. I'm trying to oust myself from a job and I don't fully know why, but I was just, I was walking around doing this monotonous job this morning and I was just having like a crisis. I was like, why am I useful? And then I started to think, and it's so, it's so in, ingrained in me because of my degree and everything. I started to think so many jobs are like this. You get so many jobs where if you really look at it, you could eliminate 90% of the human effort. And then, and then I was just like, I'm coming to work just to be here so that I can afford to be here and do this, but I don't need to be there. And I was just like, oh my God, what's happened? I was like, why do we have these jobs available that don't need people? I'm shaking. I'm shaking everything. I'm sorry. Um, why do we have these jobs available where you don't need people? Like, as I was saying, like, if you look at all of the things that I have to do, besides the human interaction aspect, because I understand completely, like, that's why I said the sales colleagues aren't completely redundant, they would be used in a call centre, because when you make an inquiry online, we then phone you, right? So, if you made an inquiry online and then just you had an automated phone call, you're not going to listen to it as much and you're not going to be approachable as much as if I call you and I go, hello, I saw you were looking at this, can I help you with anything? Because I have a human touch with it. I understand that. But site to site wise, no, not, no, you don't need many people on the site. You just need someone to be able to maintain the, the robots, someone to be able to just sort of do a little bit of human interaction, but most of it can be automated. So much of our lives can be automated today. Like there's a, there's a company called, I think like Moly Robots, I think it's in London. Um, and they produce uh, two robot arms that you install into your like kitchen and they cook for you. You can just be like, I want bolognese, for example, and they'll be like, sure thing, and they'll just start cooking and they'll clean and they'll do it all. And it's like, wow, so much of our lives, because I think you can even think, I don't know fully, I can't remember, think you can do it by an app as well. So when you're coming home from work, you're like, ugh. I'm coming home. You go on your app. You're like, oh, lasagna. Bang. It's going to take 30 minutes. I'll be home in 40 minutes. By the time I'm home, 10 minutes just to get ready. Lasagna's ready. What an amazing experience. I love technology and I love the future. I love the, I love the positive outcomes of it because the more time that you don't have to spend doing like monotonous jobs, useless tasks, various things, the more time you can actually develop yourself, learn new things, or just generally look after yourself. I think a lot of people don't spend enough time doing that. I'm very excited to one day be able to go in the bed, in my bed, I just go, I'll have a coffee and I'll have an omelette for breakfast. And then a little robot will wheel in with a little plate on his head and he will give me a coffee and an omelette and I'll be like, perfect. He'll leave. I'll then get ready, maybe even by going up to my wardrobe and just sort of cycling through some images of pitch, like clothes I have and then going, yeah, I'll have that. And it just brings it to me nice and clean. I then go out to my car, which is already fully charged because it's an electric car. I get in the car and I tell it I'd like to go to work. It goes, cool, sit back and relax. I can then just read while, I dri while the car drives me to work without any hassle. It parks for me. I then get out and I do something that's valuable to society rather than something that's a bit more what I'm doing now. Um, and then you're golden. And then you go, and then you, when you're going home, you just before you go home, you go chicken pasta. And then you just get in your car and you go, take me home. It drives you home. You do some more reading or you do some relaxing in the car and you get home and there's chicken pasta ready for you. And you're like, life is complete. And while you've been out, the whole house has been cleaned because it gets cleaned every day because you've got little robots scurrying around. Oh, honestly, if life could be like this now, I'd be a happy man.
You get always these questions where it's like, would you like to go into the future or into the past? If I go into the past, I'm most likely to die. It, just facts. It depends on how far you go, I guess. But still, there's a lot of death in the past. You go into the future, you're going to live a blissful life. You're going to live a blissful life. Mar this is going to be Mars life. That's actually a, an interesting topic. Would you want to go to Mars? Now, I think I would, but under one condition. The only condition I would go to Mars for like a non-return trip is if I can be the first out the door. I think it's a valid point that if you get to be first out of the door, you get your name wrong in history, just like Neil Armstrong. You get to say a line and everyone will go, one small step for man, something like that. It'd be like, oh, I'd, I'd leave the, sp I'd see the spaceship and I'd go, it's hella red out here. And that would be what kids would be saying for generations when they landed on Mars. I don't want to be the second chump like Buzz Aldrin or the third guy who no one remembers his name, who was just piloting the ship. That's the guy I feel the worst for. He piloting the the bloody shuttle, and Neil and Buzz are getting all the credit. Nah, nah, that man did a lot. So, I would go if I can be the first off, and I, I'll put my application out now. Whoever wants to take me, whether it's Blue Origin or SpaceX, I don't think NASA are making it there anytime soon. So if it's either of those two, if you're going to Mars and you want someone to be first on the ground, I'll do it. I've got a robotics degree, um, and I look, live for the future. Um, when it comes down to it though, otherwise, not really keen unless I can come back. In le because like I've got family here, friends here, unless you can take those people, you've got to really love the people you're going with or learn to love them pretty quick. I think the journey right now is how long does it take to get to Mars? Long does it take to get to Mars? Take to, oh, there it is, lovely. Um, the trip takes several months, a bit longer than astronauts currently stay on the International Space Station. The precise dura uh, duration of each journey depends on when it is taken because Mars is up. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a perfect time to take it where we're like super in line, uh, but it can take between six to eight months. So six months. So you've got to spend half a year with them just in a tube straight away. That would be. That's a difficult one. And then when you get off, they're the only people you're spending time with. So if you fall out with one of them, say you play Monopoly and that goes horribly wrong, they're living with you. The only people on Mars. I've actually seen a really cool concept for what they want to do with Mars, which is basically they want to send two ships, one ahead by like, I think a couple months and then one afterwards. And the first one to land will have a load of autonomous robots on it where they will basically just like we we do and we used to do in on Earth is they'll take dirt and they'll make it into bricks and they'll use those bricks to build a building like a base building and then inside that building just to because the building isn't there to be pressurized but the building is there to protect from like harsh winds and stuff and then inside the building they will set up a pressurized um, like what we use the little like plastic tents basically and it'd be pressurized and then the people that land basically will go into this building and they'll have their first building set up for them um because the ship before will have like solar panels on it and they will set all of the solar panels up they'll build this little dome to cover this building so any like sheer winds for example because mars is known for quite like heavy winds and stuff and tornadoes so with this building it will basically protect them because if they just set up that tent with by themselves it'd be pretty hectic so the robots go ahead, they build the building, and then they can use them afterwards to build other things, which I think is a really smart idea. I think having the capability to send across an autonomous team first and then send across humans, because we basically we know that if the first trip of people that go over there, because of weight constraints and stuff, the way they're going to have to do it is they're going to have to go, this was our ship. We're now going to take it apart and use the pieces inside of it. Like, for example, when you build um, you build something out of Lego, like a rocket ship. And then you go, but now I want to build a house out of those same materials. So you take apart the Lego pieces and you rebuild it into a house. That's basically what they're going to have to do. And they're going to have to use the parts on it and stuff. So that's why it's sort of like a, a non-return trip. Because then once they're developed there and they can develop fuel there, that's the, th that's the constraint, is the fuel. So once they can produce fuel there, we can then do back and forth trips. 
but until we can produce fuel there, we can't do back and forth trips. That's my understanding of it. I'm not a rocket scientist, I'm not an astronaut, and nor am I a astrophysicist. I just know base things, and I've looked at things. I like to think of myself as someone that has... And this is so dumb. I've never said it, like, I say it to people individually, but when I say it here, I know eventually it's possible that lots of people could hear this. So, I like to say that I have 5% knowledge on everything. Like a jack of all trades, in a sense. Now, I get that's horrendously big-headed to think that I would know 5% of everything, but I also don't like to think that I know 100% of anything. <laughs> I think I know some things fairly decently, but I don't think I know 100% of everything, well, anything. I think it's very hard to say, like, I, I know 100% of anything. I think if you have a very specific doctorate, you could go, yeah, of course, 100% in that field. And I'd be like, fair enough. You do have a very specific doctorate, but I've done a broad degree sort of thing. Um, I've sort of never specialised into anything. I'd like to say I'm a good entertainer, but I wouldn't say I know how to entertain everyone. I feel like everyone's very different. Um, and everyone, everyone differs on different moods. Talking of entertaining, let's actually talk about my YouTube channel and where it's at. So I did a thing. I went and paid $30 for an advert using a program called VRocket. And I paid £30 for an advert on that. Well, $30, which is about £20 for an advert on my first Minecraft episode. Uh, and the results of that are very interesting. So, in total, I'll just say the total now, we gained 35 subscribers over 28 days, so we're now on 69 subs. I will talk about this through multiple videos because I'm so happy with it and it's made me so happy in general. But anyway, let's continue to talk about it. So let's go to the video and let me go into the analytics. So. We gained a total of 1,400 views. That is the most views I've had on anything, obviously. It also is the most views I've had on my channel. Uh, like, the channel views, it's insane. Um, we had a watch time of 30.5 hours. So, that's crazy. Um, and we gained 17 subscribers from that video. So then, we gained other subscribers from the following videos, but... I do want to break it down a little bit. Um, let's go into the reach real quick. Uh, I think there was a really interesting thing. No, it's not in reach. Um, so, right. So we actually got, we got our first ever dislike on this channel. Uh, so we in fact got on this video, we got, which is an astounding amount anyway, we got 47 likes, which is more than probably... You could probably add my last 10 videos together and you still just about hit 47. So that's amazing. 47 likes, 2 dislikes. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that at all. Engagement, we got 30.5 hours of watch time as I said. Average view duration is about a minute. So it's not great. But we did gain a load of new friends. So in the comments, if we go into the comments, we got a comment from Rita Yita which says, you have everything to, uh, you need to be a YouTuber. Uh, a good voice, a good mic, and hopefully a good sense of humour. I subbed, by the way. And I've replied to them, and that was lovely. Um, we've had Dom TA saying it was a mint video, attempt to start recording myself. We had someone say, wow, how do you record on your computer? We had uh, another person say that Minecraft looks like raw chicken. We had nice video. Uh, someone asked, why was this an ad? I've had to, I did expect it, to be fair. I expected a couple of people to be like, this is an ad, right? And I was like, yeah, I'm very open about it. I'm not trying to be uh, deceptive and be like, no, no, don't worry, my video just blew up. I know it's an ad. Um, and a couple of people did comment on that. Not in a negative way, necessarily. I spoke to them, or like I, mess I commented on them and replied with them. And it wasn't in a negative way. It's just in the way of, they were just curious. And I understand that completely. And I reckon because it was an ad, that's why I got my two dislikes. Because you can't ever put yourself out there without having some negative impact. I plan to run more ads in the future. I think I want to run one on the first episode of the podcast. Because I'd like to push that one up and push that one out a little bit. And get people more engaged with this. Uh, I also have a blacksmithing course coming up on the 26th. 
So almost a month away and I'll be doing a blacksmithing course and I plan to film the whole thing um, in its entirety and then I'll probably put an ad on that. I also have a, I have my first COVID jab coming up. I'm getting my jab on the 27th of June. So I'm thinking I might film that whole process. I don't think I'm going to put an ad on it, but I think it'll be a fun start to my vlogs as well. Um, so I want to start vlogging on this channel. Currently, we have a really good upload schedule. We upload Saturday. We upload Monday. Wednesday. And Thursday. So that's four videos a week. Which is a, a hefty amount of videos, to be fair, for a small channel. Um, I'm still keeping up with it and I'm keeping pace. I'm actually filming this on a Monday um, because I'm busy on the Tuesday, so I've prepared myself for this. Um, but we're getting there and I think we're really growing at a good speed. We're getting some good views. The Minecraft series is doing really well. Um, this series is always doing quite like standardly. It's doing a really good medium, which is lovely to see. Um, I'm just so happy with the new people that are popping in and saying hello. Um, I've just uploaded a thank you video, in fact, to say just how mad that it is that this has happened and this has gone so well. Like 35 subs over 28 days. That's double the amount of subs I've had. So that's just crazy for me. Um, and I'm hoping to really keep pushing on with this um, and just keep trying to see what I can do. Um, so thank you very much for tuning in for another episode. Uh, I'm... I think it was a good episode. We talked about a lot of things. I know we rambled at the end about the channel, but I think I'm always going to talk about that on here because this is a nice platform for me to share. And to be fair, I talk about it in every single video because I'm so in love with the support and just, I love it all. So thank you very much, everyone. You mean a lot to me. Thank you. And I hope you have a fantastic day, evening or night, whenever you are watching this. Or if you're cooking, I hope you have delicious food and enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye.